President Pierre Nkurunziza of Burundi threatens to find African Union's proposed peacekeepers to protect civilians caught up in months of violence. Voting begins in Central African Republic under heavy security as UN peacekeepers patrol polling stations. Good governance is what we need. South Sudan's president, Salva Kiir, promises zero tolerance for corruption during the swearing-in ceremony of newly appointed governors. Hello and welcome to Network Africa. I am Adeshewa Josh. President Pierre Nkurunziza of Burundi shows defiance. He has threatened to fight any African Union peacekeepers imposed on his country in his most confrontational comments yet on a mounting political crisis. The African Union said this month it was ready to send 5,000 peacekeepers to protect civilians caught up in months of violence, invoking for the first time powers to intervene in a member state against its will. President Nkuruziza said in a statement, quote, everyone has to respect Burundi borders in case they violate those principles. They will have attacked the country and every Burundian will stand up and fight against them. The country will have been attacked and it will respond in the same manner. Well, President Pierre Nkurunziza said this uh, in response to the AU plan. Now, other government officials have already said any peacekeepers arriving without Burundi's permission would violate its sovereignty. Let's get more on the story. I'm now being joined by the Deputy Chair of the African Governance Architecture at the African Union, Mr. Ibrahim Sanusi. Thank you so much for making out time to speak to us on Network Africa. Uh, thank you very much, Josh. I want to thank you. Right, Burundi has taken a grave position today, being adamant about not receiving peacekeepers to be deployed by the African Union. Could this move be detrimental to resolving the crisis in country? Uh, no doubt. Uh, this is a, a big setback in moves uh, to try to resolve the political crisis in Burundi. Um, unfortunately, uh, we would expect um, the president of uh, Burundi, uh, President Pierre Nkurunziza, would uh, uh, also contribute to efforts at resolving the crisis in that country. But uh, statements like this, which is not the first uh, by uh, senior political office holders in that country, uh, would uh, unfortunately uh, aggravate the situation in that country. Um, we would expect that uh, political leaders like the president uh, and various other officials at that level will recognize the, the, the grave situation that the country is in at the moment. Uh, targeted assassinations, uh, clamp down civil society organizations and media, and, and, and several other uh, high-profile killings of human rights of, uh, activists in that country. Uh, and so this, has a, uh, this in no way, con uh, in very heavy way, I mean, uh, contributes to the crisis we see in that country at the moment. A lot of people would say that the country is currently arguing that this is an infringement on its sovereignty. I mean, if you do not want help, we cannot lord it on you. In a situation like this, can Burundi's sovereignty be infringed upon? I, I, I think that if we look at the crisis uh, uh, clearly, um, several efforts have been in place for over a year and a half to try to resolve uh, the impasse in that country. Uh, politically, several backdoor channels have been used um, to get the government to see the, the need for a, a political dialogue to resolve the issue, and particularly to abide by the various uh, uh, agreements, whether it's the Arusha Accord or whether it's the constitution of, of, the, of the Burundian people. But um, if you look at the, the, the communique of the Peace and Security Council, uh, all the processes that needed to be followed, uh, all the steps that needed to be followed have been followed. Um, the government uh, is supposed to uh, give its acceptance uh, kind uh, as it were to the communique stating that uh, these 5,000 uh, uh, peacekeepers will be deployed. Now, if the country decides that uh, it would not accept them, and of course the African Union has uh, evidence uh, and very, very big evidence, as you will recall, that the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, based in Banjo, mm -hmm. uh, had made the, uh, a fact-finding mission 
to Burundi and uh, even the press release, while we still await your report, the press release from uh, the commission states clearly that there are uh, evidences that there has been various, various violations of human rights uh, in that country. And so the African Union has a responsibility uh, as a major uh, feature of its move from the non-interference uh, um, position and principle of the, African, of the Organization for African Unity to the non-indifference of the African Union as a major feature of that change from OAU to AU, we have a responsibility as the African Union to uh, take whatever necessary steps to ensure that we forestall any outbreak of violence, of genocide, mm -hmm. of war crimes uh, in that country. And the, the African Union has that right. Uh, uh, but I know that at the moment, uh, various back channels are being used to see uh, and to get the Burundian government and, of course, the president to see uh, the reason why the, there has to be a maintenance of peace mm -hmm. as we pursue the national dialogue. So, of course, the African Union has a responsibility, uh, whichever way we look at it. So, if Pierre is saying that he is going to fight peacekeepers when they come into the country, and it looks like AU is standing its ground, that we are still going to send the peacekeepers, if I understand what you're saying, how do you see this crisis being resolved? Well, I, I, I think that um, if, if you look at uh, even the, the posture, so to say, of uh, heads of states within the region, the East African community, mm. you will see that they, they are becoming a lot more forceful, even in their own arguments and their own presentations as well. Uh, about two, three days ago, the president of Uganda, President uh, Museveni, uh, came out uh, uh, very clearly that there is a need for uh, the Burundian government to uh, look at all these issues critically and give room for a national dialogue, as it were. The AU is not saying that we are invading the country. The AU is clearly saying that we need to protect innocent civilians mm -hmm. who are at the end of all these killings uh, and, and uh, assassinations and, uh, uh, and kidnappings and arrests uh, that have been going on in that country for the last six months. Uh, so I, I believe that there is a lot of back channels that have been, uh, there is a lot of efforts that are like, ongoing at the moment using various back channels to try to get the president of uh, Burundi to see and the government uh, uh, in its entirety, basically, to see the need for a political dialogue. And I think that these are things that uh, uh, various uh, uh, international and regional institutions are trying to put on the table. As you recall, uh, if you recall as well, uh, the UN Security Council has a very, uh, has a standing decision also on Burundi. Uh, they, they have also given their green light uh, to efforts are saying that these issues are resolved right. using a national dialogue. Mm. But we need to, I mean, this is one, uh, an example of the efforts of the African Union at saying that countries become very responsible right. on their home. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, the AU cannot just invade that country because at the end, citizens will be at the, at the receiving end of whatever uh, outbreak of violence and clash that might happen in that country. So they will always continue to see how they can resolve these issues to avoid uh, an all-out uh, all war in Burundi. Definitely, it's a challenging situation for the people of Burundi and also for the African Union, a big test as to how to resolve that crisis. Thank you so much for speaking to us on Network Africa. Mr. Ibrahim Sanusi is Deputy Chair of the African Governance Architecture at the African Union. Thank you. Well, it's a new dawn in Burkina Faso as President-elect Rokmak Kabore sworn in in the capital, Ouagadougou. President Kabore highlighted the economy and social governance and jobs for the young and women among the priorities of his government. While President Kabore appears ready to take Burkina Faso to the next level, the former prime minister noted that the task of being the president of a country is always, even though exciting, a very difficult one. Burkina Faso's newly sworn-in president, Mark Kampore, has highlighted the economy, social governance and job for youths and women among the priorities for his government. The former prime minister took office on Tuesday as the country's first new leader in almost 30 years following his election last month. The ceremony at an indoor stadium in the capital marks a pivotal moment in the democratic transition in the West African country after veteran leader Blaise Kampore was overthrown in a popular uprising in October 2014. Most of the country's leaders since independence from France in 1960 have come to power through coups, including Kampore, 
1987 and his predecessor Thomas Shankara four years earlier. Mark Kabori served under Kampori but went into opposition in 2014. The election could serve as an example to other countries in Africa where veteran rulers in Burundi, Rwanda and Congo Republic have changed constitution to allow the extension of their mandates. In any case, the task of being the president of a country is always, even though exciting, a very difficult one. I must let you know that we inherit a context that is not simple at all in terms of economy and finance, so we have challenges ahead of us and with the government we are going to work towards taking on those challenges. Landlocked Burkina Faso produces cotton and gold but remains impoverished. Its economy has slowed due to lower global commodity prices and reduced investment during the democratic transition that began after Kampori fell. I would say what we have to work on initially is the establishment of good economic and social governance. I would say this first issue is important. Then we have to work on education, health, clean water, agriculture. Therefore, we have to boost the economy in order to create jobs for the youth, women, etc. It is very important we work on that. The government said the economy will expand by 4 to 4.5 percent this year, a World Bank figure of 6 percent growth in 2014. The swearing-in ceremony marks the end of an interim government that held power in the wake of Kampore's overthrow. Soldiers from the elite presidential guard stayed a short-lived coup in September in which they took the transitional president hostage. What a turnaround there in Burkina Faso. Let's take a moment on news, uh, Network Africa. When we come back, new weather report shows the strongest El Nino weather cycle on record is likely to increase the threat of hunger and disease for millions of people around the world. We'll take a moment and we will be right back.